several times a year, the major networks all broadcast peanut specials. You know, a group of characters created by Charles Schultz and led by the kind, big-hearted, and sometimes awkward Charlie Brown. Who can't forget the Great Pumpkin or a Charlie Brown Christmas? In a few of these episodes, the Peanuts gang is sitting in their classroom and we hear their teacher talking. Well, we hear the teacher, but we don't really understand the teacher. What we actually hear is a muffled noise, kind of like a wah, 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 wah. You know, the fact is, we can't actually make out anything as we hear the monotonous tone of the teacher as it just drags on and on. Unfortunately, this very scene realistically plays out every day in conversations all over the world. We engage in conversations where we are either on the receiving end and essentially tuning out the person who's talking, maybe because they're going on and on and on, or we're on the giving end of the conversation and we are giving the listener something that isn't engaging in conversation or maybe talking at them instead of with them, or maybe even giving them something that is psychologically being blocked by the listener's internal mind patterns. We live in a world that, to be very honest, is full of noise and disruption coming at us from every angle. Interactions and communication occur at so many levels, from in person to by telephone, through text and social media, one-on-one, big groups, small groups, and everywhere in between. So much information is thrown at us every day, and our brains have to figure out ways to literally keep us sane in the midst of what can be quite a bit of chaos. That's why communication, clear, impactful, and meaningful communication, is so important. The title of this week's episode is, Say What? Because I fear we have come to a point where we all hear garble, sometimes more than we care to admit. We selectively tune things out. Maybe we have so much going on in our minds, there are other things we're telling ourselves we genuinely don't hear what's being said to us. We hear many people say many different things, and even sometimes we hear many people say the same things, and we just shut them out. All those voices, all of those messages, immediately sound just like Charlie Brown's teacher. Sometimes, when we don't want to hear the other person, or we don't understand them because we're consumed by something else, or maybe we feel they aren't communicating clearly, we flip a conversation, a communication, into a confrontation, sometimes unintentionally. There's so much truth to the old saying, message matters. What you choose to say and how you choose to say it can directly influence who you are communicating to, even on a subconscious level. And whether or not we like to admit it, it can affect us just as deeply. You'd think that since we do so much communicating, both speaking and listening, that we'd be really good at it. Especially if you add up all the hours we spend communicating face-to-face, by phone, text, or all the reasons that I mentioned earlier. I think if we added up how many times per day we initiate or receive unique communications, some people would truly be stunned. Ever checked your cell phone bill to see how many texts you send and receive in a day? We do it so much, you think we'd be perfect at it, right? So why do so many of us have so much trouble communicating with others, even in the simplest of things? My wife and I have been together for over 25 years, married over 23, and there are times she'll say something to me and it just doesn't register, or I don't understand. It might be her, it might be me, it's usually both of us. So how do we not have this whole communication thing down pat with a perfect system, unmistakable recognition? I mean, we've been together over 25 years. How do we not have this perfect by now? Well, the short answer is this. Nobody's perfect, and we're always learning. But more than that, I think we communicate with different people in different ways. And sometimes we allow ourselves to use patterns that work with one person with someone else and don't always find success. Or as I mentioned earlier, sometimes we've just got so much on our mind, we don't allow ourselves 
to listen to the other person or to process what they're saying. In our case, as the years have gone on, we've learned a lot about not only how and when to communicate with each other, which, by the way, is all the time, but also how to interpret that communication and allow it to go back and forth so we can carry on a meaningful conversation. How many emails, phone calls, text messages does it take with the same message for somebody to get it, for somebody to hear you, for somebody to understand? After 24 years as a teacher, nearly 24 years married, and nearly 20 years as a father, I won't say that I have the magic formula, but I've learned one thing that has served me well time and time again. We should all strive to speak in a way that others love to listen to us. And I don't mean in a way that we're just telling them what they want to hear kind of thing, you know. And we should listen in a way that others love to talk to us. I honestly think that most people have a natural ease in regards to speaking or listening, but not always both. For some of us, speaking comes easily and listening is a challenge. And for others... Listening is easier than communicating our own needs, wants, thoughts, or desires with other people. For me, this is a hard pill to swallow because I love to talk. Those of you that know me personally know that really well about me. But I don't always love to listen. I find that in a lot of conversations, I always feel like I have to have the last word. And I always have to say something even if it's not completely relevant to the conversation or the situation being discussed. Even in text messages, I find myself taking a conversation somebody else has initiated where somebody else truly needs a listening ear, and I end up making it about me. As a parent, I found myself getting into discussions with my kids that don't turn out to be discussions about some issue or concern and Instead of hearing their thoughts or their ideas or letting them speak through it, it becomes an hour-long speech about what they did right and what they did wrong and good decisions and me telling them about what I did when I was their age and what I think the right thing should be for them to do. And I rarely give my wife a chance to give her input. I just keep talking and talking and talking. And I'm not saying you shouldn't give parental advice, but it's important as parents for us to both talk and listen something I've always struggled with and something I keep working on. Here's the reality of communication and why we struggle with it. We long for connection, for relation to personal experience, and also with judgment and comparison. We eagerly wait for something to relate to when we're listening or for someone to tell us they understand and have experienced what we've gone through. We also sometimes, subconsciously, wait to use our own judgment in a discussion, comparing our own standards or values or thoughts with the person we're speaking with. In order for communication to be effective or even possible, judgment and comparison must go out the window, and we must be open to the fact that we may actually learn something or be changed by what we hear. We listen with so many unconscious feelings that we honestly don't clearly realize or process everything somebody says. Feelings of fear, repressed longing, dreams, desires, hurt, or something else. As a speaker and a listener, there are so many key things we can be conscious of when having a discussion that can turn our talking at into talking with and our into an open ear. I want to share just a few things today that I think can revolutionize how we think about communicating with others, whether we're speaking or whether we're listening. And trust me, these are things that take work because we're all creatures of habit. And after we've communicated with others essentially the same way for so many years, we have hard habits to break. The first thing is this. When communicating with somebody, try to focus on being interested more than being interesting. I'll say that again. Try to focus on being interested more than being interesting. How important is it for us to understand the other person in a conversation? This goes with both speaking and listening. This also includes when we may not seem to understand all sides, and we honestly probably never will fully. And Most of the time, we might not agree with all sides. I heard it said one time that the first duty of love is to listen. How important it is for us to listen with openness, positive interest, and acceptance, 
And you'll notice I didn't say agreement because we may not always agree with the person we're talking with, but if they're going to keep talking with us, they need to know that we're not judging them by what they're saying and that we're listening with a positive interest. The second thing I think is important is to ask questions. Now, this can be an area that many people have to be careful with. We're not looking to ask questions to know all about the details to get ourselves deeply involved in what they're talking about. They may not divulge details to you, or maybe it's something personal and private that they really feel is none of your business. However, questions are like keys. If we're truly listening, we can craft questions that allow us to understand more and then respond in a way that offers support and an open line of communication. And probably just as important as asking questions is not feeling that you have to have all the answers. We seek as humans to support one another. Asking the right question in a particular situation, you can improve a whole range of communication skills. For example, you can build stronger relationships. The type of question you ask, though, should really depend on the situation and how invested you are in responding. Asking what could be like a closed question or one that you know will give you a brief and probably predictable response doesn't always open up communication channels, something you're going to get yes, no, left, right, whatever it happens to be. But more open questions, or what some might call funnel questions, allow you to seek details without asking the person you're speaking with to divulge too much information. But it gives you something with which you can respond and potentially open up a bigger line of communication. And one final thing I think is super important in developing effective communication is giving our undivided attention. Ernest Hemingway once said this, when people talk, listen completely. Most people never listen. You must validate the other person by letting them know through your eye contact, your body language, your tone, that your conversation with them is important. I'm really guilty of this sometimes, doing something on my phone or computer while somebody else is trying to talk with me. Quickly disregarding what they have to say is not as important as what I'm doing, right? You ever find yourself in that situation? And I know there will be times when somebody will just, like, charge in the room and just start talking and interrupt what you're doing. And I know it's hard to focus on that. Trust me, I teach middle schoolers. It happens 500 times a day. When we focus, it gives us an opportunity to truly listen and then time to process and then understand. Most of us don't treat conversations like that. We have so much going on. We try to multitask or just say we're listening when we're really not 100% focused. Stephen Covey once said, Most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. And if you think about that, that really can affect how your whole conversation, how your whole communication goes. Listening is a magnetic force. Attention is an act of will. And listening, where we demonstrate that we're hearing both the content and realizing the feelings the other person is expressing, is the key to the art of effective communication. And even far beyond letting the other person know you're truly interested in what they have to say, you're showing respect. Think about the flip side. If you asked somebody if you could chat, and they say yes, and as you start talking, they start flipping through social media or texting or rooting through papers, how would you feel? We'd expect the same thing, wouldn't we? The scriptures are full of text about communication, and if I could sum up many of them, it would be by saying this, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and willing to understand. You've heard me talk many times about the power that our words can carry. Our words coupled with our actions can speak volumes. Well, if we're talking about volume, think about the power that our ear can carry, that our demeanor can carry, the power that grace in a conversation can hold. It's so important that we exercise love, graciousness, and humility toward people with whom we converse, especially if the attitude of what is shared is not reciprocated. We're certainly not honoring God if we coldly present facts or engage in an argument without exemplifying love and compassion for the precious people we are speaking with. So today I challenge you with this. Think about the last five conversations you had with someone whether it was face-to-face, by text, FaceTime, or something else. Is there anything you would have wanted to do differently? Or maybe I'll ask it this way. Is there anything you should have done differently? 
if you had to figure out the percentage of a conversation and how much came from you, what would it be? And should that figure be flipped? This week, I encourage you to really think about how you engage yourself in conversations with an open ear, with an attentive mind, and with an open demeanor, and with grace and love. Allow God to be your first thought and the guide behind your words and actions. As Philippians 4.8 says, this is the NIV, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. When you allow these things, when you allow God to be the first thought of your words and your interactions, His work will flow through you and have a much farther reach and greater impact than you could ever imagine. So the next time you find yourself saying, Say what? Seek to be present and loving to all those who you communicate with. As always, I really do appreciate you taking time to listen. See you back here next time when we'll have more for you on cue.